Welcome back from Thanksgiving, everybody. It is the, ooh, I think it's the 30th. I uh, can't remember, the 29th or 30th. Let's see. It's the 29th. I'm not rushing things, but the 30th is payday, and I like getting there. Um, you're going to have three sheets plus another complete drawing that's separate for your mechanical final. I would start by drawing all your detail views. Make sure your dimension style is set up per the book, and you can see that the text height, thus the arrowheads, changed to 0.15. Now, on center marks, I already have my center marks in. And if you put line in your dimension style, every time you put in a radial dimension or a diametric dimension, it's going to put a center mark attached to that dimension that you cannot stretch, you cannot change. So I leave this none right here. Extend beyond dimension line is still 0.125. This is still 0.062. This is the same. This is the same. All these things are the same, except for the text height and the arrowhead size. Your small and large styles will be the same. And these are the, the settings for small and large. You might want to check those. And if you go ahead and set that up, that's kind of part of the administrative things. Um, when you draw, when you make your drawings, these are called the saddles. And this is optional. You see how when you have a hole that breaks out of a cylinder, it has a curved edge. Um, the same thing happens on this drawing. You see this, this saddle? And you can draw this straight across this is optional we don't normally put that much detail into it but you can see how they get to it they drew a line straight across here and then where it breaks out down here at the quadrant is here and here but this is a little bit taller so you draw a three-point arc and you need to already have your axial center line in there and you can go one two three with that projected line across and it will draw that saddle now that once again that is optional so don't draw this top view you know completely and then have to change it into a section view just draw it as a section view um let me see what else we're still asking for this end view of this pen and i don't know why because we don't have any dimensions that can go in there all dimensions will be in this view right here because all the diameters of cylinders, the three chamfers, come in with a multi-liter. So I'm going to um, just pull up a, let me, let me pull in this mechanical working drawing. And for multi-liters, this is your multi-liter right here. So with multi-liters, if you hit the down key, you can see that you can add multiple lines to a multiliter. You can also align multiliters. You can collect multiple balloons on there. But to see the styles that are in, that are in here, you can either go to Format, Multiliter Styles, and there's a balloon style that has a circle, and it's going to ask you for a tag number, which actually populates that balloon. Now, it won't have the quantity in there, so you'll probably put multiple balloons. You only have one item that is in there twice, and that is the washer, and you can put a balloon on each one. The standard style is a multiliter with text on it. So when you have a chamfer, and let's say that I have this cylinder, and I have a chamfer, C-H-A is chamfer, and that's a, an angle corner instead of a fillet. You're usually going to go for an angle instead of two distances. And you'll see, say, the size. And I don't know what the size that is. Let's say 0.15. And then the angle. So it's going to be 45 degrees. At 45 degrees, it, does not, it doesn't matter which one you pick first and second. You're going to pick one. This is locked. Let me unlock this drawing it on the wrong layer but you can pick one and then pick the other and at 45 degrees it doesn't matter which one you pick 
And then when you have an angle, you're going to have this line across it because that's where the cylinder, turned off my object, snaps. That's where the cylinder becomes an angled cone. Uh-oh. Down to that end point. Now, when you're specifying a chamfer, you're going to use a multiliter. So in order to set what kind it is, if you go over here to this annotation area, you can do it in the annotation tab, but you can also do this right here. You see it's set to balloon. If you set this to standard, don't ever use annotate because that scales the text. And then I click on leader here. That's the style it's going to use. So I can go to the midpoint and you want to pull that out. Notice that if you're too close, it won't put an arrowhead in there yet because you're too close to it. Drag it out, and you want to be perpendicular. You don't want to be pointing like this or no one knows what you're doing. Click here, and then it's going to ask you for text. Now, notice that the text here is too tall. It should be 0.15, and then you can type in. Let me double click on that. Let me do this again, sorry. So let's put one on this side. 90 degrees, make sure it's 0.15. And then down here, I'm going to start typing. Um, 0.125. Uh oh, so I don't know how I don't get over there because it's not letting me change this. Let me show you something about this. Something about this is incorrect. This style needs to be set up probably. And so if you go to format, multiliter style on standard, let's modify it. It's going to have multi-line text. It's going to follow the standard text style, which is Arial. But the text height, you can change it to the same height as our dimensions right here because a chamfer is a dimension. And then the leader structure is two points, click, click, and then you can type. And then um, the content is multi-leader text. Now the leader format, your size of your arrowhead should also be the same size as your text. So that's 0.15. So if I say okay on that one, and I already had one out there in the standard style, it would change it. But let's look at the balloon. The balloon's text height is 0.25. So if I hit modify here and I look at this size of this arrowhead, just leave the balloon alone. But if we go to um, content, you see it has a block and that text is already in there. So leave the balloon alone. But now if I have this set to standard, and I go in here and put a multiliter in. I can go from the midpoint and click, and it's already 0.15, and I'd say 0.125 by, and that's all caps, 45 degrees. And then when you have your degree symbol, it's up here in the symbols library, and the most used are right on top. So that, that's a multiliter for chamfers, and you've got a couple of those, and we haven't used that before, so that might be good to have that. Um, if I were going to point to this, and I were going to put a balloon on it, I would change my leader style to balloon, and then when you put in that leader, you point to an object, and you do this, I think it says in a certain paper space or model space. There it is. So I think you put these in in paper space, like in your layout tab. Because if I go to the assembly here, and let's say I pan over, and I look at that, it may be really small when I scale this to one half. So if I go to one half, and I don't know what if that's a scale. Now, if I put it in in here, let's say I put it on text, and I put in a multiliter, and I put it in in paper space, and I put in a multiliter. You see it, the size difference here? 
This is scaling with everything else. I think you're going to put these in in paper space. So let's go and look at that just to make sure because they would get really small if you scaled your drawing to a small size. You still have to see these balloons at a certain size. Place balloons in paper space using the balloon multiliter style. Place balloons on the paper space notes layer. So you could grab that and put that on paper space notes, which is right there. So the chamfers you're going to put in in model space, just like you would any dimension. They're going to scale with all the rest of the dimensions because it is a dimension. But the balloons are only on sheet one of the assembly and they're meant to be larger. They do not have to follow the same size conventions as the dimensions. 